Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 15th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about a new scientific study that is indicating that over the next five years, the Earth will tend to be a bit warmer than we would expect, even on top of the forcing caused by human-caused climate change as a result of greenhouse gas emissions. But before I get into that, I, I'd like to talk about the influence of the Pacific Ocean on the global climate system and the natural variability-related features of the global climate system. So the equatorial Pacific region between the 10 degrees north latitude line and the 10 degrees south line fluctuates between periods of majority warm and majority cool temperatures. And these fluctuations have an effect on the atmosphere in that winds blowing over the Pacific Ocean in this region, prevailing winds, circulate these temperature changes throughout the global atmosphere and have knock-on effects. One of those knock-on effects being that during periods when the equatorial Pacific is cool, the Earth system tends to cool a bit, and when the equatorial Pacific is warm, the Earth system tends to warm a bit. And, and this fluctuation can be seen in the decadal and multi-decadal temperature graphs as we record global temperature. Now, not only does the Pacific go through these periodic fluctuations when the equatorial Pacific region is warm in El Nino phases and when the equatorial Pacific is relatively cool in La Nina phases, it also goes through periods in which the tendency for El Nino events is greater and periods when the tendency for La Nina events is greater. And this is known as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. And as we can see, the, since 1870, NOAA has provided a record of the Pacific De Decadal Oscillation fluctuations over the multi-decadal period. And you can see periods when El Nino has tended to be more common and when La Nina has tended to be more common. And these periods when El Nino has tended to be more common are indicated in the global temperature record by a relative warm period. And the periods when La Nina has tended to be more common are indicated by relative cooler periods. So what does the new study indicate? The, the new study indicates that 2018 through 2022 is likely to be a bit warmer than average or a bit warmer than we would expect because climate features like the Pacific Decadal Oscillation and El Nino will tend to tilt toward the warm side, at least according to this study. So how much of an impact does this really have? Well, looking at global temperatures, we can one of, one of the things that this study highlights is what some have called, and, and I'm not really too happy with this term, but what some have called a hiatus in global warming that occurred from 1998 to around 2009, 2010, 2011. And, and this hiatus was called by some a, a pause in, in global warming. What it really was, was a pause in, in atmospheric temperature increase at the near surface region of the Earth. Global warming did not pa pause at all. If you look at the ocean temperature measures, ocean, ocean energy increase and ocean heat increase continued throughout this period in which atmospheric temperature increase slowed down. But what were the major factors that were involved in this relative leveling off of global temperature increase? So what we saw during the 1990s 
was a period of positive Pacific decadal oscillation in which El Nino periods tended to dominate. And this period ended with a strong El Nino in 1998, which resulted in a major push on the global climate system toward the hot end of natural variability. Then following that period, we entered a, a time when La Nina events in the equatorial Pacific dominated, and this tended to tamp down atmospheric temperature increase. This isn't to say we didn't see record warm years. We did. We saw record warm years in the middle of the 2000s and toward the end of the 2000s. But the rate of average temperature increase at the surface of the Earth slowed down. Now, as we entered 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017, the equatorial Pacific really he heated up and we saw a very strong El Nino in 2016. And this pushed the Earth back to the warm side of natural variability. So, so what's the fluctuation? What, what, what's the, the flux between an, a, an El Nino tendency state and a La Nina tendency state. And the average flux on the hard swings is about 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. You're not gonna get much more than 0 0.2 degrees Celsius relative cooling from a hard swing toward La Nina. And you're not gonna get much more than a 0 0.2 degree Celsius relative warming from a hard swing to El Nino. Looking at this graph since the 1880s, what we see is that global temperatures are warming. And this is one of the indicators and just one of the indicators of human forced climate change due to greenhouse gas accumulation. And the issue is that greenhouse gas accumulation has overridden the natural cycle, causing the earth to warm considerably beyond the 0 0.2 degrees Celsius fluctuations at most that, that we tend to see. So what can we expect in the coming years. Now, according to NOAA, at least for the 2018 to 2019 timeframe, late, late this year and through early next year, we are predicted to see another El Nino form in the Pacific. Now, this would tend to relatively warm the Earth's atmosphere. And if we see this tendency for El Nino or at least weak La Ninas in the interval periods continue through 2022, then this new nature study will probably tend to be correct. We'll, we'll, we'll tend to sit on the warm side of natural variability. But it's worth noting that the decadal rate of temperature change right now is, is about two degree, uh, 0 0.2 degrees Celsius due to human forced climate change. So these, these are peak to peak, trough to trough changes. And so, so a one decade period basically wipes out any fluctuation that we would see in the natural variability cycle. And that's due to the added greenhouse gases that we're seeing. So, so though the climate system might swing a bit to the warm side of natural variability over the next five years, even if there is a swing to the cool side of natural variability following that period, at most at the surface of the earth, you're not likely to see any major temperature drops. What you're most likely to see is a slight leveling off. So this race up, potential race up to new record warmth over coming years is not likely to be bookended by a period of cooler temperatures. So, so that's some context to these recent articles that are noting that extreme temperatures are especially likely for the next four years. Well, in fact, extreme temperatures are likely so long as we continue to burn fossil fuels. And the period of the next four years if they are warmer than normal on the natural variability side, will not tend to see cooling following that period because of the accumulation of atmospheric greenhouse gases. So just providing some context 
for the recent articles.